I think Tom Brady's playing both sides of the fence here. All right. I think there's an ulterior motive. Okay. Now, you remember when Tom Brady was saying earlier in the offseason about, uh, you know, we shouldn't have to practice this much. You know, uh, we shouldn't yeah. have to be here. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, Brady. Strategic. Yeah, Brady Quinn was the first conspiracy theorist who said, listen, like, this guy's not going to be out there getting extra reps in. Like, he's just trying to get a competitive advantage over a lot of other uh, people in the NFL. Uh, well, uh, Tom Brady was on Sirius XM recently, uh, and he talked about the league, and apparently the league getting soft, according to the 44-year-old quarterback. There's a lot of plays and hits that are happening on quarterbacks now that are flags for defensive players that – probably weren't that way 10 or 15 years ago. So I'd say the game is a little softer than it used to be. You know, I think the defensive players are more on the defensive when they go into tackle. And I I think that's probably adding to this element of quarterbacks outside the pocket and taking more chances, you know, than, than they did in the past. Yeah. That's a guy trying to diminish quarterback play amongst youngsters in the league and also kiss ass to defenders like LeVar Arrington so they take it easy on him next time. I That's mean, LeVar, preach. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's trying to kiss your ass, LeVar. He's not wrong. <laughs> I mean, think about it. He's a fiery dude. I mean, you think back to the Super Bowl, him and the Honey Badger were getting into it, and Honey Badger gets the flag. Meanwhile, it was Tom Brady who instigated the whole the whole yeah. entire deal. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way the, 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 way the world is as it applies to to football, is that you're going to protect the highest grossing commodity, the most fundable, investable, monetizable commodity in the game. Yeah. And that's the quarterback. That's business, too. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, business. In the business world, it's the same way. That, yeah. it, 100%. So, to me, he's stating the obvious because even when when we played, it's just an evolution of the complaint. The complaint has always been there. When we were playing, and and now I look back on when I was playing, it's like, man, like, I was still able, like I told you guys the other show, I was still able to get two and a half steps and lace a quarterback up. Lace him up. You actually used to be able to, I remember one time, Charles Bentley is one of the, the most amazing offensive linemen that people may not have heard of Brady's guy. or know about. But Charles Bentley was a grown yeah. man on the football field, right? Mm-hmm. I used to destroy offensive linemen when I played. And I remember this one game against New Orleans. I hit Charles Bentley, and it was like, sheesh. Like, the sweat came off me. I think I, like, my tongue went back in my throat. Like, it was such a traumatic force when we met. It offended me. I was offended (laughs) by how my body reacted to hitting his. So, maybe one or two, because I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let that go. Like, I I love the smoke. I love beef. I couldn't let it go. So they had a run play. It was a off it was a off tackle run play misdirection and it's going the opposite side of where I was coming from and LaCharles Bentley is watching the ball go downfield. I destroyed him. Blindsided him. Then kept rolling him downfield. Like, I'm just hitting him. He tried to get up, I hit him again. He tried to get up, oh, I hit him again. I'm that's, just That's dirty. It's, it, it's football. <laughs> and you can't, you can't do, like, you can't do martial law things. Like, I looked at LaCharles after I got done, like, hitting him. And he gets up, all, he's like, all right, all right, I'm going to get you. Like, he's looking for the rep. He's like, what is this? What? He, all right, I got you, right? To me... The rest of the game was a war. It was a it was a straight up man to man. He was looking for me every single play, and you didn't have to look far because I was looking for you. I was so offended. You don't have that now. I would have I would have been flagged. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I ain't going to go as far as say thrown out of the game. But imagine if that was a quarterback. You know, you can't crack back block. You can't. There are so many different things now that that are so much geared towards taking away the physicality of the game, which, again, I don't disagree with it. I'm making the point of as violent as we were back then, we didn't think we were allowed to be violent enough. 
So now where we are right now, where it's literally touch sensitive, especially with quarterbacks, it's just kind of like they got to adjust. You got to adapt and you got to figure out how you can pick and choose your spots to do what you do. But the evolution of it, you got to adjust. This is the new normal. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it is what it is at this point. I, I will say this, though. There are some rules they've put in to help defend defensive players. I mean, you're not allowed to sides. block below the waist. Right. Yeah, you're not allowed yeah. to block below the waist outside the tackle box anymore. That was a move because you saw offensive players doing that. Breaking legs. Go, yeah, going after the knees, too, right? Yeah. And Denver, so, your, team, your team was notorious. We came into that game. Who was it? Neil? Was it Neil on the, on the line? I want to say Neil. He might be yeah. older than you. But, he was, but yeah. I know you're talking about. Bro, they were known as leg breakers. This is a leg breaker game. And yeah. you said it and you meant it. That wasn't like for for S's and giggles. That this is a leg breaker game. Be ready. Like work I, on chop blocks and zone block and chop blocks cuz they're going yeah. cuz they're going to try to break your leg. I mean, I, I do I do think that takes out some scheme to it, right? Like as much as it's for safety, it also levels the playing field. Like for people who don't understand, when when you got Lovar, for example, on the end of the line of scrimmage, and if you've got a guy who potentially could cut him and go after his knees or his legs, you're not going to run a field as hard, are you? Like, it's, it's, a, it's a different scenario when you got a team like that. I remember back in college, like, trying to prepare our defense for Navy. It just wasn't about the triple option. It was about that our defensive linemen were going to get cut. <laughs> like, they would be getting coming after their knees the entire game, and you just had to prepare for it. There's, there was, there's no rules to stop you from doing it, especially within the tackle box now. So yeah, that's just part of the game. Here's, here's where I think this is schematic, though, and, and, and this, is, this is a strategy by, by Tom Brady. What does Tom Brady do better than all these youngsters? Because we know he's not a guy who's going to play outside the pocket. Yeah. He lives within the pocket. He lives within that comfort zone, right? That's his home. That's his house. And he maneuvers around his house effortlessly, right? From the family room to the kitchen, whatever. Like, you can't stop him. He, he's, he's like so fluid and so smooth, and he knows he's protected there. And you can't get to him because he gets the ball out so quick. Mm. He usually gets the ball out quick enough where... Quick. You can't get to him. Mm -hmm. He knows where he's going with the football. Where young players make mistakes is where they hold on to the football. They, and, then, and then they try to extend the play like they do in college, or they try to, ex try to make something else happen instead of just throwing it away or, or anticipating and getting it out sooner because they don't necessarily know where to go or they old can't anticipate what's going to happen. They're old head. I mean, Big Ben was just doing it this weekend. <laughs> old head quarterbacks do the same thing. He'll do, well, you go back to last year, though. No one got the ball out of his hand quicker than Big Ben. Yeah, well. He, 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 had the, he, he had was the holding fastest. that bad boy this, this past maybe, week. Maybe last week. It was like a pin pulled grenade last but year. But you're, like, hey, you you're talking to a Steelers fan, so, you know, I'm going to be hard on him. I mean, he was I get the ball. It, and, that, and that's the frustration last week. Don't but, hold but, the ball, like, Ben! He's, he's trying to get after Matt Canada right now anyway. I'm sure they're having yeah. that probably oh, conversation this him. morning. Can, can you call plays where I don't have to hold the ball so long? But this is another angle for Tom Brady where it was the offseason you mentioned trying to get other teams to not practice because he knows he's going to he knows he can get those teams together it's the same thing here he knows yeah it, it, like you know make the rules more difficult for these guys out of the pocket you know let these defenders go and blow these guys up and, right. and, and, and keep protecting the pocket but for all these guys who want to get outside of it you know go after those guys don't don't come after me because he will complain about touching him whenever you touch him he's looking at the he's looking for a ref like Ref, can I get a call? Can I get a call? Yeah. I mean, come on. The tuck rule is based off of Tom Brady, if y'all remember. Hello. Yeah. 